Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. Tonight we have the Unify ACHD Wave 2 Access Point. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open the box. I already have this out because I've, I've been testing it. So, let me show you what comes in the box real quick. You saw the box here, but this is the access point itself. And I don't know if you can see how big this is. Uh, you know, I don't have huge hands, but here, let's put it in spec into perspective. This is uh, an APAC light. So you can see my hand. I can palm this um, APAC light. No problem. The HD, there's no way. If I try to palm this, it's going to fall. <laughs> I'm going to look like a real fool. <laughs> Um, so we'll come back to this. Um, let me show you the box real quick. So you've got, um, the box is, is pretty big, pretty well packed. It's got all of the Unify, uh, propaganda on the back. And, uh, this thing can do, uh, two gigabits. So, um, that's kind of the, that part of the box. Here's what comes in the box. If I can get the box open. Cover this uh, styrofoam that was covering it. Got this rubber piece, and I'll show you what that's about here in a minute. Then you have mounting bracket and of course it is proportionally as large as the HD. There's your bracket for your drop ceiling. Quick start guide. You got the massive 48 volt white uh, PoE adapter and then all your mounting hardware. So it's pretty standard fodder what comes in the box. So what's different is, you know, obviously the access point itself. So let's go back to this unit. You can see if I flip it around that it's got, um, I don't know how many of you know what this is, but this little barcode, um, you don't need a Unify controller to configure the Unify access points. You can scan using the Unify app. You can scan this barcode and you can configure these using the app instead of having a controller. And speaking of smooth, um, if you have an HD or just by looking at this video or seeing other videos, you can tell that the finish on this is different. If you feel this, it's not like the smooth, hard plastic feel that, um, that we're kind of used to with the UAPs. So even if I switch back to this APAC light. First you can see the metallic looking U logo and that kind of pops off. It's it's uh, embossed or extruded. I don't know what you want to call that. Um, and then you've got the light here and then this is like a smooth smooth plastic. Well I, I believe for regulatory uh, purposes for these to, to go into other countries they had to make some changes and I also believe that uh, all of the new access points at some point will all have this same kind of matte finish. And the logo here is actually, I believe that's screen printed right on the, uh, the device. So back to the back of this device. You heard me earlier say it can do two gigs. So what kind of ports do you have? Well, down here you've got the primary and the secondary port. And then... You also have a USB-C, and then you have your reset. So the USB-C um, is interesting. You can see those um, on the uh, the Pro APs, and the you can also see USB ports on the EDU. I don't think it's C. This is the first one that I've had where it was the USB-C. So you can create a lag here. Um, so let's uh, let's plug this guy back in. 
and uh, we'll hop over to the controller real quick and we'll poke around and, and see what kind of options we've got. Be right back. Real quick, before we get to the controller, I wanted to come back to this rubber piece and what this is for. So uh, the HD is, you know, it has some weather proofing. You, I don't think it suggested to install this in direct weather, just like with the AC Pro. You know, you can mount it where it's not going to get direct water on it, you know, outside. So what you would do is you would run all your, your cabling um, in, and then, you know, you would put this, the rubber mount the rubber mount inside of this and then you would have some semblance of, of weather sealing. I have not put this unit outside. This unit has not been in my shower like the mesh access points, but if I want to give it a bath or put it outside, I can uh, sleep, you know, sleep at night knowing that I've got this rubber stopper to go in the back. All right, so let's get over to the controller. So one thing that I have noticed is that it does take a little while for this access point to boot uh, and reboot and provision. So I'm a, I have to assume that that is that is hardware related. So if you know otherwise, please post down in the comments. So you can see we've got this adopted into our controller. So let's bring bring this guy up. So here's our overview screen. We've got our Mac address, our firmware version that we're running, our IP address, our uptime. We can take a look at our NBG, um, our NAAC radios, and then of course we can do a um, an RF scan. You can see that I've, I've never done one here with this. We can hop over here. We can see users guests and then configuration. I've got no tags. Um, here's my alias. I'm also using the site LED settings. So we can start looking at our uh, radio configuration. Now it's been brought up, you know, why doesn't this support VHT 160? It could. Um, it very well could. I mean, the hardware is capable of that. They can write the software to do that. But can you think of any practical application that's actually using that now besides saying that it's there? Um, and really, when you start, you know, when you start using uh, bigger um, channel widths and, and bonding these channels and things like that, do you really know the impact? I mean, those are some some questions that you got to kind of ask. So I do um, applaud Ubiquity for holding off on that, and I specifically have asked that question to them. So uh, VHT eighty should get you the throughput that you that you need for now. And you can see that I have the transmit power and the channels and everything uh, manually configured. You can see we've got just our standard controller um, you know, default WLAN group with the FBI VAN SSID. You can go over here. Okay, so uh, this is where you can enable that um, port aggregation. I don't, I don't have that turned on. Um, I plug, plug and unplug devices all the time when I'm working in the lab. So um, I'm getting a new rack tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to move some things around. So I'll have two racks in the lab. If you want to see a video tour of the lab, let me know down in the comments. Um, if I get enough people that are like, hey, we want to really see what your lab looks like, then I may do uh, just a video tour of the lab. Um, but once I get set up, eventually I'm going to dedicate certain switches and and procure more switches uh, where I can do things like creating a lag and then not have to write it down document it in the in the lab environment because I'll know that you know this switch this is the switch where all my lags exist and I'll do it in a two port you know configuration and, and things like that it'll make it a little bit easier with the price of 
the uh, Unify switches and the Edge switches, you know, why not? I mean, it's very economical. Um, anybody who's looking to get, you know, their feet wet with uh, layer two, layer three switching, um, I, I don't know how much more inexpensive, you know, you could you could do it. I mean, maybe you can, but um, you're def definitely getting uh, more bang for your buck with the Ubiquity gear. So we don't have that enabled right now. Um, and then here's manage device. You can do, you know, custom upgrade, disable this device, forget this device, and then we can do the debug terminal. I open that up, which by the way, this is really slick. I don't know if, if you've, uh, you know, ever used it or not. But what we could do is uh, make sure that my phone is connected and we see Willie's phone and we see that I'm connected at 866 megabits and I better be connected at good speed I'm pretty close to this thing so what we can do is less uh, let's do this let's SSH into let's go into our server Boy, I botched that password. And we'll do, um, let's see. Um, let's do iperf 3 s Okay, so we're starting iperf 3 and I'm going to go to the phone, and I've got the iPerf app on the phone, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, the app that I use is called iPerf uh, Magic. Uh, Magic iPerf, sorry. And so what I'm going to do is... I will um, go ahead and start this. And so we are going to connect from my phone over to and so what we did was we went from my phone as a client through the HD to the Linux server. And I got for being connected to 866. So that's really kind of it for what I've got on the HD right now. I do know that I've seen um, uh, my friend uh, Sean, if you're out there, how you doing? But I know that he has one of these that has had several hundred users connected. Um, and maybe he will post down in the comments how that's working out. I don't have these deployed large, you know, in a large scale yet. I've got the one here in the lab, and then, you know, I've got a couple here and there, but I've got a sports arena that I might be looking at, maybe swapping these out. We'll see how that works out. But uh, if you've got any questions about the HD, put them down in the comments. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Please, uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Um, one more quick thing. Uh, if I started a, uh, a like a vlog called like Security Saturday where we talked about you know the weekend security, um, the kind of things that happen, you know like I don't know AWS is you know completely blowing up on the East Coast yesterday, or you know these teddy bears that have been recording what kids say, stuff like that. But then also talking about you know security theory and you know from a management you know standpoint is that something that everybody be interested in um so let me know but once again so if you like the video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe please comment and share and we'll see you in the next video